वेलकम फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ शॉप टू पूर्णी फ्रॉम बाय लाइफ होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेरी वेल टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ जेनेटिक्स पैरासेंट्रिक एंड पेरिसेंट्रिक इन्वर्शन इन्वर्शन इज अ टाइप ऑफ क्रोमोजोमल एबरेशन और म्यूटेशन इन द क्रोमोजोमल स्ट्रक्चर ओके एंड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर सी एस आई आर नेट एंड गेट ऑल्सो एवरी ईयर वन और टू क्वेश्चन कम्स फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर ओके सो Let's get started. Before beginning, if you are new to my channel, I would like to request you to kindly subscribe to my channel by pressing the bell button given below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. And if you have any doubts, don't forget to leave a comment below in the comment section. You may also uh, follow me in my Facebook page, Bio Life Ju Felix, in my Facebook group, Bio Life Sale, or in my Instagram profile, Shop the Pony Bio Life. So okay, let's begin. See here, what is inversion? From the name, it is evident that inversion is a type of chromosomal aberration where some region of the chromosome will get inverted. Okay, see here. Uh, if this is the chromosome, this is our chromosome which contains A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H genes, and two cuts are made at these two position, at this position and this position. Okay. This BCD two cuts are made at this BCD region. Then this and then this cutted region is getting rotated one eighty degree. So it will get inverted. Okay, and that rotated segment is again rejoined with the chromosome. That kind of chromosomal aberration is known as inversion because after rejoining the the sequence becomes inverted from BCD to it becomes DCB. Okay. Inversion is a type of chromosomal aberration where there is no uh, no loss of gene or no duplication of gene occurring. Okay, so it is generally it is not harmful, but if the cutted region contains any of the gene gene segment or the region which is controlling the gene, then it could be harmful. Okay, but generally it is not harmful. Okay. Now there are two types of inversion. One is paracentric inversion, and another one is pericentric inversion. What is paracentric inversion? Paracentric inversion means that type of inversion which does not include any centromere. Okay, this is the example of paracentric inversion. See here, the centromere is located between E and F, but the inversion is taking place at the region B C D, which is away from the centromere. Okay, so it is a type of paracentric inversion now on the other hand pericentric inversion includes the centromere okay see here the centromere is uh, located between e and f and the inversion is taking place at d e f region okay and d e f is getting inverted into f e d okay so the inverted region contains as it is contains the centromere this kind of Uh, inversion is known as pericentric inversion. Now people gets confused uh, in the name. Okay, paracentric and pericentric and their phenomen phenomenon. You have to just remember one thing. Pericentric. The name peri includes the letter i. I means including the centromere. I to include. I to include. What does it include? It includes the centromere. Okay, so you have to just remember the phenomenon about pericentric from the letter I, and you can then easily remember what is paracentric inversion. Okay, this is the uh, trick to remember it. Now coming to the next slide. See what is crossing over. Crossing over. is the exchange of genetic material between the non sister chromatids of the homologous chromosome what are homologous chromosome we know that we have 23 pairs of chromosome and uh, for each chromosome the pair okay one is coming from your mother and one is coming from your father let's say these two chromosomes are our chromosome 1 okay yellow one is coming from your father and blue one is coming from your mother so the strands these two strands are known as sister chromatid these two strands are known as sister chromatids but the two strands of two uh, homologous chromosome the blue one and the uh, yellow one are known as the non sister chromatids and crossing over is the exchange of genetic material between the non sister chromatids okay by forming a chiasma 
so here the uh, two chromosomes are normal okay their sequence are normal g h i j k l g a small g h i j k l but if one of them are getting inverted let's say this blue one is getting inverted and the sequence is becoming uh, from i j k l it is becoming uh, l okay k j and then i okay it is becoming like that l k j i so what will occur as the sequence is now getting inverted it cannot form the base pairing the complementary base pairing as the normal chromosome so when there is a, a normal chromosome and there is a inverted chromosome okay so when they have to uh, do the crossing over they cannot form the normal kind of chiasma then the inverted chromosome the inverted part should make a loop like structure to pair with the normal uh, part of the homologous chromosome okay we will see it in a little bit okay so uh, let's say this is the paracentric uh, paracentric inversion this is the paracentric inversion why is it paracentric inversion because see the centromere is here the centromere is here but the uh, inversion is taking place in the bcd position which is away from the centromere and the part is getting inverted into dcb okay dcb so as it is away from the centromere it is known as the paracentric inversion now after the paracentric inversion if the meiosis occurs what will happen this is our main concern see here these two are the homologous chromosomes blue one and the peachy one are the homologous chromosome and one of them the blue is the normal um, uh, counterpart and the uh, peachy one is the inverted counterpart now one thing to remember is that if the two uh, two counterparts of the homologous chromosome are both are normal then there is no uh, no need to form the loop okay and if both the strands are inverted then then there is also no need to form the loop because in both the cases they can form the normal base pairing okay Co normal complementary base pairing but if one strand is normal and another strand is inverted one chromosome is normal and another chromosome is inverted then normally the base pairing between the gene sequence cannot be formed so then you need to form a loop to form the base pairing okay so in homozygous normal condition or homozygous wild type condition or in homozygous inverted condition there is no need for loop formation but in case of heterozygous condition when the one one chromosome of the homologous pair is normal and another one is inverted you need to form the loop to to match the gene sequence or to form the complementary base pairing during crossing over okay see here the blue one is the normal so it is there is no loop formation here but the peachy one is inverted so to match with the bcd part of the blue one it have to form a loop like this okay then only it can match the b portion with the uh, of the uh, blue blue counterpart and d portion of the blue counterpart now what happens in the meiosis prophase prophase one of the meiosis you know that crossing over occurs now here the strand one is um, getting uh, remaining constant and strand 3 is also remaining constant because these two strands are not taking part in the uh, crossing over see strand 1 is not taking part in the crossing over and strand 3 is also not taking part in the crossing over so uh, after meiosis 1 you will find that after the prophase 1 of the meiosis 1 you will find the strand 1 is at is as it is and strand 3 is also as it is the only difference is strand 1 is normal strand and the strand 3 is inverted strand okay dcb the inverted strand now the crossing over is occurring between strand 2 and strand 4 okay strand 2 and strand 4 are our main concern see here here is the centromere and here is the centromere if we uh, look at the this part of the strand 2 we you will find that it is going like this a b then the crossing over and now it is going to the strand 4 c d and again a okay so it is now containing two centromere one centromere is here and one centromere is here 
So this is the structure now formed. A, B, C, D, A. And these are containing two centromeres. Two centromeres are here. So this kind of structure is known as dicentric bridge. Dicentric means two centromeres are present. And they are bridging the normal and inverted chromosome. Okay, inverted chromatid part. Okay. Of one and three. Now another thing is that if you go through this portion okay this portion of the second chromosome it will be like h g f e d c now the crossing over and now the train is like that b e f g h so this is the h g f e d c b e f g h and this does not contain any kind of centromere so it is known as Acentric. As it is don't contain any kind of centromere during anaphase, the spindle fiber cannot get attached to it and it will get it will get lost. Okay. So it is not our concern here. So from this it is evident that in paracentric inversion at the meiosis one dicentric bridge and acentric chromosomes are formed. Okay. Now, coming to the segregation phase of the meiosis 1, that means the anaphase 1. During anaphase, the uh, spindle fiber will attach to the centromere part, okay, at this part and this part, and they will uh, form and they will uh, pull the uh, chromatids, okay, towards the two poles, okay, they will pull the chromosomes towards their poles, and as a result, there will be a formation of tension. And as the tension is formed, there will be some breakage in the dicentric bridge. See here the breakage is shown between A and D. And as the breakage occurs, there will be deletion. Okay, there will be deletion. After the meiosis 1, the two daughter chromosome will contain chromosomes like this. One will contain the uh, composition of 1 and 2 where one is purely normal and two is containing the deleted part and another daughter chromosome will contain the four and another daughter cell will contain four and three four is deleted and three is normal three is inverted but uh, fully uh, functional three is inverted but fully uh, there is no deletion or duplication after the second meiotic division, anaphase of second meiotic division, at the end of the meiosis, the four gametes will be formed. One will contain the normal product, okay, uh, of strand one. Uh, another uh, one, uh, another gamete will contain also the normal, but uh, also the uh, fully fu fully functional, but the inverted uh, uh, product, okay, from strand three. And two of them, two of the gametes will contain deleted product from strand 2 and strand 4. Okay. So, these deleted products, the gametes with these deleted products are non-viable because there are some deletions. But the gametes with normal product from A1, one, one strand and normal pro, uh, inverted product from third strand uh, in which all the genes are present will be viable. Okay. So, this is all about the paracentric inversion. Okay, got it? Now, we are coming to the pericentric inversion. Okay. Okay, now coming to the pericentric inversion. Okay, see here, pericentric inversion means that kind of inversion which, which is uh, including the centromere. Okay, see here the inversion is taking place at BCD position. BCD position which is getting inverted into DCB. Okay, and the centromere is here. Centromere is here. So, this is a type of pericentric inversion. Same, uh, uh, similarly, uh, here also one strand of the homologous chromosome is normal and another one is inverted strand. That is why the loop will get formed. Okay, so at the meiosis one, the in at the prophage one, the blue chromosome, the blue chromosome is uh, uh, remaining as normal, but to pair with the blue chromosome, the PC chromosome have to form a loop so that it can come uh, close to the B portion of the uh, blue chromosome and D portion of the blue chromosome. Okay. Now the crossing over is taking place between the B and C portion, B and C region of the chromosome. Now the uh, strand 1 will remain unchanged and strand 3 will also remain unchanged because after the uh, meiosis 1 because they are not taking part in the crossing.
crossing over so see here after meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 the strand 1 and strand 3 are remaining unchanged okay and they are viable only difference is strand 1 is normal and there is no inversion and in the strand 3 it is uh, it has the inversion but there is no deletion or duplication that is why they are viable those gametes who are getting the strands from 1 and 3 they are viable now the crossing over is taking place between strand 2 and strand 4 let's see here how does the crossing over taking place see here if we run the train from the strand 2 from this point we will get a then b then the crossing over c now here the centromere then d and again the a okay so this is the product okay a b c then the centromere then d a a b c d a a b c then d then a okay got it now coming to the next strand from here let's see h g f e d then centromere then your centromere then c then crossing over then b then e f g h okay so this is the fourth product okay this is the fourth product which is also containing a centromere like the second strand second fourth strand and the fourth prime strand okay as see here the this strand this strand containing the duplicated portion of gene a okay there are two gene a but there is no e f g h so e f g h is deleted but a is duplicated here on the other hand on this strand a there is no a so a is deleted but e f g h is duplicated okay so as a result here is some kind of duplication and deletion too and here is also some kind of duplication and deletion too these two strands those gametes who are getting these two strands will become inviable okay because they are not containing all the gene <coughs> all the gene of the chromatid okay so they they will become inviable so this is the condition in in the meiosis or after the crossing over of pericentric uh, inversion okay so what are the difference between para and pericentric inversion after the crossing over uh, in crossing over of paracentric inversion you will get a dicentric bridge and a acentric uh, chromosome okay uh, recombinant part but in case of pericentric inversion all the um, all the recom the, the two recombinants will be of uh, monocentric but they will not be viable because they will contain some deleted and duplicated products okay so this is all about paracentric and pericentric inversion and we will in our in my next video i will discuss about the questions which come from this chapter in csi and net okay i hope you have all got this chapter now clear in your mind the concept is now crystal clear if you have any doubts you may leave a comment below in the comment section i will answer to that okay so for the time being thanks for watching and happy learning